If you're like me, then you're still playing some of the old gaming systems. One of my favorites was the old Sega Genesis. Well, our next guest wanted to get a little more speed out of his Genesis, so he decided to overclock it. Here to explain how it works, please welcome 19-year-old Devin Gallo. Hey, Devin. Hey. Dude, I'm stoked to have you on here. You're doing some crazy stuff with the Genesis. I remember these things from way back when. I had one, used to love to play it, but you're actually wanting to speed it up a little bit. Uh, why exactly, why overclock it on an old Genesis? A lot of the older games, well, ones that were closer to the end of the system's lifespan, mm -hmm. were extremely demanding on the hardware. So when the system got overworked, it would start slowing down. So the programmers were creating these uh, complicated games that would actually work the CPU too much, and you would see certain artifacts on the screen, or what were you experiencing? Less artifacts, but more, um, more slowdown. The same thing would stay on the screen for too long. For example, you'd be trying to jump or fire, and the, you'd be in the air for too long, or shots would take too long to reach their destination. It was mainly just things taking way too long. So waiting on the CPU. You decided I'm just going to crack open a Genesis and start hacking away, or basically, yeah. Nice. So what? What did the girlfriend think about this? You know, was she like, stop hacking with the Genesis, spend some more time with me? Oh, there is no girlfriend, but uh, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. So, <laughs> tell me here. This is the Genesis that we have here. I found this one on the set. This one's old, dusty, it's been laying around. We took the screws out. I'm going to open it up here. So, uh, tell me what exactly are we looking at here? Well, basically, you've got your, just your metal plating here, just shielding it from interference. Okay. And then you get that off of there, and you've got the motherboard here. The, what you actually want to be working with is your CPU over here in the corner. So this is the CPU. What type of CPU is that uh, running? That's the Motorola 68000. Oh, interesting. So it's like, uh, almost like some of the old Apple CPUs that they used to. Exactly. It was used in some of the Macintoshes. Okay, so you have Motorola CPU now. Uh, where's the knob? I mean, today's motherboards, you, you flip a jumper or something like that, or you used to flip a jumper, you do it in software. How are you going to overclock this thing? I don't see any jumpers here. Yeah, these weren't designed to be expandable. They weren't even meant to be open. So what you need to do is find a pin on the CPU. It's actually pin 15, which should be located about here. Okay. And um, you find the trace, the wire on the board coming out of there, mm -hmm. and then you cut that with a, like an X-Acto knife, and then you connect a new clock frequency to it, a okay. new signal. So explain why are we cutting this uh, with an X-Acto knife? Is that where it's getting the clock frequency from? Yeah, it's pulling it actually out of this chip over here. Okay. And um, so what you need to do is just keep it from getting a signal so you can give it whatever signal you want. What megahertz is it running at right now? Uh, 7.6. And what are we going to overclock it to? 13.4. Oh, that's quite a bit. That's a nice little performance increase. Now, where are you getting this new clock frequency from if you're cutting the, the lead all together? Well, Sega was anticipating that a lot of games would include extra chips for 3D, things like that, but they need a clock signal too. Okay. So they included a higher one, the 13 megahertz signal, on the cartridge slot. So what you can do is actually just go to the back of the board. Okay, let's flip this around right here. And you take it out like that, and then on the back side, you can just find um, pin B19, which has a higher signal. And that would be on this, coming off of here, right here, the slot, right? Yeah, you'll have, um, you'll go right here toward the edge and right there. This will be B32. You go back to 19 for the normal signal and then back further to 15 and you get a 13 megahertz signal. Okay, so you're just going to basically solder and then do a patch and you'll get the 13 right. megahertz CPU. Right. Very cool. So tell me, show me the back of yours here now. Yours is a little more, you have switches and all kinds of stuff going on over here. Explain, how did you set this up? Uh, well, basically I've got two switches here. Uh, this one here is the halt switch and this is the clock switch. Okay. Uh, this one actually lets you pick the speed, so you can pick between 7.6 and 13.4, okay. or 8 and 13. And this one lets you stop the CPU from doing whatever it's doing for a moment. Just so you pauses can the CPU it. or yeah. stops any yeah. information from flowing through it? Right. If you change speeds while it's running, you, um, then you'll have it crash. So what you want to do is start it up at the slow speed and then halt it and change it to the higher one. Okay. So we have some games here. We have all different types of games. You have uh, Echo the Dolphin. Is that when you uh, echo the dolphin? Come on. Uh, you'd be surprised how slow, how slow the, the game is. The dolphin slows everything down? Uh, less the dolphin, but more all the aliens. So what are we when playing here? When you end up with 10 or 15 of them on screen, things get so slow, it's unbelievable. What's the best example that we can show on here? We have Sonic 2. Is this going to be a good example of it slowing down? Yes, because okay. um, Sonic 2 actually had a two-player mode where it's got both players going at the same time. Oh, it's split so screen. It's, it might as well be running the game twice at the same time. Okay. So it's Let's very... Very demanding. Let's do it. So All right. here we have, uh, oh, you have it already set up and everything. So we have two Sonic games going on here. Um, what, how are we going to slow it down now? Well, basically, one of the best ways to slow down the system is to put a lot of sprites on screen. So I'm going to jump onto these spikes, and you'll notice it. 
goes extremely slow. Then. Yeah, it wouldn't even let me move the there for a second. On the screen, exactly. Yes, the platform starts slowing down and all that. But now, if I go to the back here and I so when you flip the switch to halt, so, so everything you, stops. Yeah, it just messed up the entire screen. Yeah, the music's so, still going though. Yeah, that's a different chip. So okay. The chip keeps going. So you turn it to 13. So and now you just overclocked it by flipping the switch. And now it's unhalted. And now it's moving again. And so now if you jump onto those spikes. Boom. Oh, I see. Much faster. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a pretty dramatic increase. Very cool. So that's uh, now it's completely running. Any worries about it getting uh, you know, too hot when it's overclocked, like no, you have with common really. CPUs? Uh, no, generally the CPU will stay within about oh, 80, 85 degrees at the hottest. Mm -hmm. So not even hot enough to need a heat sink, much less a fan. Very cool. And the total cost on this? Uh, with a, if you don't already have a soldering iron, some wire, you'll generally run about $15, $20 at the most. $15, $20, bucks, done deal. Now how about uh, the old Genesis that we have here? Do you think you can overclock this during the time that we have at the rest of the show and we can come back to you? And it's possible. I should be able to do that. Very cool. So shot. I'll give you a little challenge. If you can get this overclocked, we got a bunch of free stuff. I'll let you take as much of this free extra junk that we have laying around as you want. Does, it, does that sound very exciting to you? You're yeah, like, I don't care less. That sounds like a good deal to me. Excellent. <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, Devin. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for inviting me. For a detailed article on how you too can overclock your Genesis, head on over to epicgaming.net. You actually wrote an article there, has all the information. All I can say is best of luck, Kevin. But still to come, learn about the